did not see people who looked like me in the fields I wanted to go into or the, the rooms I entered. If there were women, they were often white, they were straight. As a queer woman of color, I haven't found myself represented in the spaces I wanted to be in. So I'm trying to do that today. I'm trying to be the person that you know young queer girls can look at and say, I can be in that position. I can be doing data for good. I can be using technology for the world. As a data scientist at the Center for Inclusive Growth, I am thinking about how we use data to drive social impact. The Center for Inclusive Growth is MasterCard's philanthropic and social impact arm, which means we're giving grants or money to organizations around financial inclusion and small business and impact data science, and we are driving social impact in those areas. Social impact is really about asking the question, how is this going to impact society? And is it gonna impact society positively, negatively? Are there any harms that will come from this information? And then making sure that we play back that there is a social benefit when we're making decisions. What you are seeing here right now is a heat map of the entire United States with every single census tract colored by its inclusive growth score. And so a higher score is green and a lower score is red. The inclusive growth score is a tool that the center created that measures economic health and inclusion at a geographic level. We take MasterCard data, public data, private data, bring it all together and create this index that helps us understand how a community is doing. It includes things like income, the number of new businesses, the affordability of housing, income inequality, and takes this balance between inclusion and growth to understand communities at a very hyper-local level. And think about, are we seeing growth and are we seeing inclusion in that area? We can zoom into the city of Chicago and can see a very clear divide between the scores. Inclusive growth is important because as a society, as an economy, we know how to do an economic growth really well. We're really good at making money and growing business, but we're not always as good as a society at making sure that that growth is inclusive. And now we can compare both of these census tracts. We can start to make the case and think about inclusive growth score data saying this is a good investment, not only for you because you will see the money come back, but because this community cares, and because this community needs this type of investment and has the potential to grow tenfold just from this one investment. We're comparing cities to cities and rural areas to rural areas. Area, so it's more of an apples to apples comparison. We've seen it used to make the case to open a grocery store in a food desert. So for years, they did not have access to fresh and healthy food. And we were able to use inclusive growth score and other data sets to make the case that it was a good investment, not only for the investor, but also for the community. One of my favorite examples to talk about is Howard University. Howard University is a historically black college and university that we've partnered with to start the first ever Center for Applied Data Science and Analytics. All of the students who come through their programs are focused on social issues like environmental justice, health disparities, climate, but then they also add that layer of data science rigor on top of these social problems so that they're able to bring different perspectives to that knowledge of data science that they'll then apply in their careers someday. If we think about data science as a tool, then it becomes something that helps us do something else better. We funded some work and looked at college dropout rates and said, can we take data to predict when someone might drop out and put some sort of intervention in and make sure we're addressing these students before they get to the point of dropping out. And so data science becomes a tool in that effort to keep students in school. And so if we look at this, I've been volunteering with the Center for Inclusive Growth for around two years. I love volunteering because I can be a part of building something that is larger than myself and feel deeply connected to the community around me. And that can be the community at a local level, a national level, or a global level. I'm passionate about how we can use data science to drive positive social change. When I think about making the world a better place and doing it in the most thoughtful way, to me, that means using data to do so and making data-driven decisions. Overall, it seems like the highest score on... Something that I think is really special about Smita is that she is always bringing together the data science and technical skills with the real world experience. She's able to connect the dots between what the data is saying and how it looks on the map, but then also connecting it to what's happening in the community. Smita is incredibly knowledgeable and kind 
and such a supporter and champion of those around her. She has helped me become more confident and encouraged me to try and step out of my comfort zone. I was raised to really think about social impact and service to my community through my parents and through my religion, Jainism. It's a very central part of who I am and kind of how I operate in the world. Some specific advice I have for women and non-binary folks is to find your voice and help the people around you find theirs. Building confidence really in any field, whether that's data for good, technology, or, or anything you decide to pursue, find your voice, find your expertise, and find the things that you love.